This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. Sign up for their bundle deal at the link in the description and get free access to Nebula, where you can watch an extended cut of this video. Congratulations! If you're watching this video, it means that you made it through our past 231 decoy videos and finally found the one about milk. Your prize is that you get to watch a video about milk. So do you ever lay in bed awake at night and wonder to yourself, why? Why are over 90% of people in Asia and Africa lactose intolerant? Well, I don't because I never sleep. No YouTubers do. Night is when we have the secret meetings to decide who the algorithm will radicalize that week. But I also don't wonder because I know the answer, and if you want to know the answer and you're not in the mood to press all the tiny confusing letter buttons required to look it up yourself, you've come to the right place. So lactose intolerance is one of those things that varies widely depending on the country, like capitals or country names. For example, 2% of people in Denmark are lactose intolerant, while almost 100% of people in Zambia are lactose intolerant. That's a big difference. Big enough that it makes you say to yourself, man, that's a big difference. But why does it exist? Well, it turns out that back a long time ago, before we had iPads or Richard Nixon or the concept of written language, around 8000 BCE, we had milk because we'd figured out how to domesticate animals. But adults weren't supposed to drink the milk because milk was only for babies, and if adults drank it, they would get sick. That's because in order to digest lactose, a sugar that's in milk, we need an enzyme called lactase, which our body would produce when we were young, but then stop producing once we were old enough to get our own food instead of mom being our food. If our bodies don't have enough lactase to break down lactose, then the lactose sugar hangs out in our guts and is eaten by microbes who produces gas and other bad stuff that makes people very uncomfortable and ruins dates and undergarments and so on. But then some weird gross adult Neolithic pervs decided that they were going to drink the milk anyway. And what's more, they were going to drink the milk from cows. And apparently, at some point around 7500 years ago in we think Central Europe, our genes said, you know what, this is weird, but if you're going to insist on it, fine, and mutated to create the lactase persistence trait which allows adults to keep producing lactase at high baby-like levels. While a lot of people think of lactose intolerance as some sort of medical ailment, the truth is that it's actually the lactate persistence trait that's unusual. What we call lactose intolerance is just the absence of that mutation, which only about 30-40% to of the world has, which according to math means that 60-70% to of adults are lactose intolerant. But why is that 60-70% to so concentrated in Africa, Asia, and to a lesser extent South America? Well, it's the same reason as why Khloe Kardashian had a falling out with her stylist Monica Rose historic cattle patterns. You see, the lactase persistent trace distribution seems to be pretty closely linked to where in the world people could historically raise herds of cattle and thus drink milk from that cattle's teat, which is unfortunately what the udder's milk tentacles are called. Especially before 1900, there were more deadly cattle diseases like rinderpest in Asia and Africa than in Europe. Plus, South America, Africa, and South Asia are all relatively hot, and the higher average temperatures are, the more lactose intolerance there generally is, both because in colder places it was easier to store milk for long periods, and because less heat meant cattle were less likely to die from being too hot. Here's a map of average global temperatures, and here's a map of lactose intolerance. It's not an exact match, but it's not not close. We also generally see that the higher a latitude is, the less lactose intolerance, most likely because people experiencing shorter winter days had more need for the vitamin D that milk provides. Taken together, these also explain some of why there's so much intolerance variation even in lactose-loving Europe, where colder, more northern places like Kerrygold Moo Cow Ireland have almost unanimous lactate persistence, while hotter southern Europe is much less so. For example, only about 17% of Greeks have lactate persistence. That's part of why the Greeks invented the yogurt I'm afraid to pronounce. The fermentation that makes milk into yogurt also breaks down the lactase. But lactose intolerance, like other less funny forms of intolerance, is also closely linked to ethnic groups and their history. In China, for example, one study found that while 92% of Han Chinese were lactose intolerant, only 76% of ethnic Kazakhs were, likely because historically Kazakhs were nomads whose lifestyle involved moving their cattle around to where temperatures and food availability could support them. Some newer research has also suggested that there have likely been several cases of lactase persistence evolving independently from the European mutation, mainly in Africa, which helps explain some of the continent's patchy lactase persistence. 
In Sudan, for example, about 17% of ethnic Beja are lactose intolerant, compared to about 75% of Nilotes, despite those groups living very near each other, which is explained by the fact that traditionally nomadic Beja pastoralists drank a lot more milk, and thus had a stronger evolutionary incentive to develop lactase persistence. In sum, if you're one of the lucky few who can eat ice cream without having to eat your stomach later, you can thank our accommodating, non-judgmental evolutionary capabilities for figuring out a way to deal with your ancestors being weird freaks who decided to steal a baby cow's food. Even though their ancestors apparently respected cow's property rights, widely lactose intolerant China is now the world's second largest dairy consumer. Huh? You ask? Well, I'd love to explain more, but if I did, the video would be too long. So that's why I made an extended Nebula Plus version that's available on, believe it or not, Nebula, which, if you don't know, is the independent streaming service I and other YouTubers started to help us experiment more and to make content free from the tyranny of YouTube's algorithm. The best way to support us and to get access to all of Nebula's great exclusive content, including two HII originals and three Wendover originals, is through the Curiosity Stream Nebula bundle deal, where you'll also get access to Curiosity Stream. The streaming service with thousands of great nonfiction titles, including a great documentary about another beloved beverage, the story of German beer. When you go to curiositystream.com slash HAI, you can get access to both for the rather unbelievable sale price of just $14.79 for the whole year.